in what seems like the middle of the night, but it's now about four o'clock in the morning. Many of us have been here at the SEIU 721 since like 2.30 this morning. And uh, even though there's a government shutdown, uh, we're all here. There's people gathering from all over the county uh, to be part of this event to help other people. Um, I guess if we weren't here, it's the 22nd of December. Many people are getting ready for Christmas, and I guess this is how we get ready. But I can't even imagine, as a mom, walking for days with my children and not having food, clothing, um, not knowing whether we're going to make it or not. As a mom, it breaks, it breaks my heart. And I think that it's wrong that people are being blocked at the border, just, just trying to live, to have life. Like, you shouldn't have to struggle and, 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 and fight a system just to have life. Like, that's something you're born with, having the right to live. The right to be able to take care of our children, and raise our children in safe environments. Like, we all want that. That's not just in the United States. It's great to help out at home, too, you know, but our help does not stop just because there's a border. We need to help everyone. These people are trying to better their lives for their families just like anyone else would if they were put in that situation. And I think it's my responsibility as a U.S. citizen to be able to help others. And I think as a registered nurse, it's my responsibility to do that. Trump decides to close down in order to try and make it harder for us to come and go across. When we come here to this side, of the Mexican border and we're stopped and we're told everybody has to get down. We have to get all the materials down, all the supplies down, all the tents down, all the boxes of medical supplies. Take them all down one by one by one and then reload them onto the three buses and the medical unit. No matter what this government does or any government, we're going to make sure that we bring hope and help to those migrants. They are our sisters and brothers. And our message is loud and clear. We'll do whatever it takes and we'll do it over and over and over again. Right now, our group is stationed at four different shelters throughout the city. Uh, they're providing medical, legal, and mental health services. Uh, we're just ready to go in and see what the conditions are inside. Uh, we went to the shelter, the Baretal, and uh, we weren't allowed to take cameras in there. It can be difficult to tell based on the news, like what's true, what isn't, but I can tell you that being there firsthand, um, there is a great need. They need drinking water, they need trash bags, they need cleaning supplies, in individual toiletries, that way they can pass out to more people instead of having one big container. There's a great need to continue what we have started today. We provided uh, blood pressure screenings, uh, blood glucose screenings. There was a lot of medications. Nurses were also handing out depending on the need. This is the first time that the union has crossed the border to provide aid in a foreign country. And there was a learning curve. We have started building connections with community organizers, so we will have that. I think overall this was a great learning experience, so I hope that um, the union continues the momentum that they've started because after speaking with a lot of people in this group, I can tell you that the energy is there to continue the work. And I think that we have to continually assess what the needs will be. One of the things that I was hearing was that one had to be out in 90 days. That seems a bit rapid. There's a lot to be done. We don't want to wait for any authority or government to determine what we can do when we can do it. We just need to get busy and do what we do as nurses and healthcare professionals, social workers, everybody has a role and it needs to be in real time and ongoing.